Welcome to episode 50 of the Get Well With Me podcast, where our philosophy here is excellence, not perfection. I'm your host, Adrienne, and you can find more of my content over on my website at adriannehart.com. Together, we explore the healing powers of our unconscious mind while leaning towards a more healthy lifestyle. We're embracing the idea that happiness is homemade and our life is only as good as our mindset. Please subscribe to this channel on iTunes, Google Play, CastBox, YouTube, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you're doing your listening these days. All right, let's get into this episode. So I promised you we would go over Dr. Sarno's daily study program, just his kind of homework for feeling better. And um, before we do that, there's one more concept that I want to make sure we don't miss. And it's the concept of the child primitive. Essentially, the part of the mind that just doesn't want to grow up. It has no interest in being a grown up or doing what it's supposed to. Just the kind of part of you that just wants to do what you want to do. And it's selfish and doesn't care about anyone else. We all have that that child primitive, we're going to use Dr. Sarno's terminology there. I can actually think of a few other ways to term it, but um, just to keep things nice and clear, we're going to go with that concept, the child primitive. That part of you that is just like, hell no, I do what I want. Um, I think of like Cartman from South Park. I do what I want, right? That part. So when you have tendencies to maybe be a perfectionist or to be good or to be a caretaker, be a good person, help others, have success in your life, all of these pressures that you're putting on yourself, it really makes the child primitive super angry, like tantrum angry. <laughs> so um, I wanted you to be aware of that child primitive because... Um, that's the part of you that's like fighting against, you know, the, it's, it's like a little war in your mind. The, the one that's like, we have to be good. We have to help everyone. We have to be successful. We have to get up on time. We have to do all these things. And the child primitives, like I do what I want. And when I don't get my way, I'm not happy. I'm going to pout about it. So it's not something that, um, we are necessarily aware of, right? That's what this whole talk, this whole series is about. It's like, what is even going on in the unconscious that's showing up on the dashboard of our bodies and, you know, in the form of faint pain and other things. So the next thing I wanted to cover was a denial of the syndrome is part of the syndrome. And Dr. John Sarno has a very proper diagnosis, TMS, and um, the reason that I haven't really touched on that is because that is that is just not the point of this. It's not to give you a new diagnosis. It's to help you understand the mind-body connection. Um, however, if you are suffering, you're going to want to know all about TMS and exactly how it works and why it works and um, how your mind is able to initiate these pain um, responses in your body. So um, denial of the syndrome is part of the syndrome. So if you right now are like, this is so ridiculous, there is no way that emotional pain is causing physical pain. There is no way that there's an angry little child inside of me that just is pissed off about all the things that I have to do in my life. <laughs> if all of that sounds ridiculous to you, but you do have chronic back pain or neck pain or, you know, something else, well, maybe pay attention to this or at least let me plant the seed in your mind that you do need to get more information about the mind-body connection. So um, denial of the syndrome is part of the syndrome. So if you just hear yourself saying like, no, no, it's not that. It's my herniated disc. No, it's, it's not my emotional pain. It's this genetic disorder. Um, whatever it is, if you feel that like denial, I'm not a doctor. I'm not telling you what it is or what it isn't. What I'm saying is open the door, open the door of your mind to realize that a lot of our suffering is brought on by our unconscious mind. That's what I'm saying. When, um, when I mentioned that denial of the syndrome is part of the syndrome excerpt from the book, um, so here's the homework in the daily study program. It says, if you haven't done so already, read the whole book. So, and he recommends healing back pain or the mind-body prescription. 
Um, and then he says, after that, just read the psychology treatment chapter every day. So I've been through the treatment chapter multiple times. Um, it says to pay close attention and then to set aside 15 minutes a day to just kind of review your your list of unconscious pain. Now, the truth is that a lot of what's really bothering you isn't going to come out right away. It might never come out. That's the whole point. Um, but he does ask us to make a list of all the things that may be contributing to painful feelings inside of you. And then he goes on to suggest to write an essay, the longer the better, about each item on your list. So I started <laughs> making a list and I'm up to number 20. And in no way do I have any desire to write an essay about these things. So I'll be honest with you, that's not going to happen. Um, but he does go on to say that people who have TMS, they have certain personality traits. So the tell me if you identify with some of these. You expect a great deal of yourself. You drive yourself to be perfect, to achieve, to succeed. You're your own worst critic. You're very conscientious. You um, sensitive to criticism, deep down feelings of inferiority. Um, these are all kind of attributes that really make us very angry inside. And um, additionally, a strong need to please people. You want people to like you. You tend to be very helpful to everyone and anyone. You're the caretaker type. You're always worrying about your family and friends, your relatives. And um, that can also make you furious inside, like I just described about the child primitive. It, it even says here, the child in our unconscious doesn't care about anyone but itself, but it gets really angry about the pressures to be perfect and to be good. Um, a, a subtle but important source of inner anger, I'm reading this um, from letter D of the treatment section, is the fact that you're getting old right? Like inside, we might act like we're being graceful about it, or maybe we might even be a little distasteful about it. But just a lot of inner anger comes from the fact that we're getting old and that we know that we're mortal. And it really pisses us off inside. We get really angry about that. Um, that anger may never come to the surface. But I, I see what Dr. Sarno is saying. He says, consciously, we rationalize but unconsciously, we're enraged. So close personal relationships, no matter how good they are, are often the source of unconscious anger. Because, and as we mentioned in um, our, just our previous episode, it's really hard to be angry at a parent. Like, you feel like you're not supposed to. You feel like you're not supposed to be mad at your spouse. And you particularly feel like you shouldn't be mad or frustrated at your child, right? So we kind of like keep it together, so to speak, on the outside. But like deep down, we're really pissed, right? <laughs> um, so he goes on to say that the angers that we're talking about are repressed. You don't feel them. You don't know that they're there. You don't know that they're there. You don't even know how angry you really are. It's inside and your unconscious mind has decided that we're just going to keep it there because that's the safest place for it. It might actually be <laughs> the safest place for it. It's a matter of when we're not acknowledging it that our body now needs this distraction, right? It does, doesn't want us to even acknowledge it, doesn't want it to even pop up into our conscious thoughts, let alone be expressed in another way that would our unconscious feels like if it comes out it's going to destroy the life that we've built and so we do everything we can to protect ourselves from that so anyway getting back to this list right <laughs> oh my goodness when i made my list i was like wow okay um yeah there's a lot here and it definitely is affecting me so i encourage you to make your list um i'm gonna be really 
vulnerable with you guys and share some things on my list. I'm not going to share everything on my list, right? I mean, obviously, it's a private list. But I, I think there might be some things on here that you can relate to. And especially if you identify with that personality type, like you just like care about everyone and you want everyone to like you and you want to help everybody and protect them and worry about them. Like, I mean, I, I no wonder I related so well to this work. Like this is just, this is me to a T. So here's a couple things on my list. Um, number one was worrying someone in my family will die, right? It's like this thing that we know is going to happen and it hasn't happened yet. Well, it has happened, but I'm saying like my current worries, right? And it's true. Like I am, I am actually, when I think about it, like that does bother me. I am pissed that people I love are not going to be with me or the flip side of that, that I would die first. And that like people who need me, I wouldn't be there for. I can almost break into tears. Like, this is not a thing when people are like, what's bothering you? Like, I don't know. I'm afraid somebody might die. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's like a harsh reality that maybe we're all in denial about. Okay. Here's, here's another one. Um, worried about what's going to happen to people I love in eternity. So when I was really little, I was on the school bus and I was told, you know, that I was going to go to hell because <laughs> I wasn't baptized or something like that. So I was worried about that. And then I was worried about my brothers and sisters. And I think that for many of my living years, I had a deep sense of fear about not just people dying, but like what's going to happen to them after. Maybe that one really hits home for you. Maybe it's something you don't allow yourself to think about, or maybe it's something you've spent a lot of time thinking about. And it's certainly something that you can reconcile with your faith. I just, um, that's a deep one. Um, worried I won't be successful. Worried that I'm not going to make a permanent impact. But I think that we sometimes have this feeling like we're supposed to make a difference. We're, I feel that I'm supposed to make a difference, right? <laughs> I don't think that that's just like something special that, you know, was put in me. I feel like we all have this kind of sense that we're supposed to like leave this legacy and we don't know really what that permanent impact looks like. And you know, like, is my life, what is it amounting to? Is it going to even matter when I do die, right? Like those kinds of thoughts. Um, another one was like, like deep down, like worried, like that I'll start to look old. Um, worried that I'll lose my worth. I'm just being really honest with you guys because I'm all about like believing that I feel good and I look good and that I'm anti-aging. But like deep down, right, I'm... I'm worried about it. I I do a lot of things to kind of like stave off the aging process. I'm not saying that that's wrong. I'm just saying it's inside and it's a yucky feeling, right? One that I try not to think about or that I feel like that I shouldn't feel that way because I am, am into health and wellness. See, like all these things like that we're thinking that we feel that we're not supposed to. Um, like a deep, here's another one, a deep sense of guilt for not keeping in touch with my friends better. Yo, I know you guys have that one too. There's like people that mean so much to us. They're like a part of our heart and we haven't talked to them in days, weeks, months, years sometimes. Uh, here's another one. Feeling that I'll be judged or misunderstood for sharing what I know and what I'm learning about the unconscious mind. It was like a big deal for me. I'm like, oh man, if people know I study hypnosis and neuro-linguistic programming. They're just going to think that I'm woo-woo or that I'm out there or that I don't have faith. Like that was another interesting thing <laughs> that came up, like that I'll be misunderstood. Oh gosh, you can just like, I can feel I, I can't believe I'm really sharing these things with you guys, but I am. Because if you're listening, I'm hoping that you're going to benefit from it.
And if you're not listening, it doesn't matter because you're not listening. (laughs) Another thing I tell myself. Here's another one. I worry about the house I live in because it's the house that I grew up in. And I feel like no matter what I do, I just want it to like represent maybe like what my dad wanted it to represent. I just know that every time I make a change or an upgrade or pick out a paint color, you know, I'm not just worried about how I feel about it. I'm worried about what my dad would have thought if he was alive. I worry about what my brothers and sisters are going to say. And of course, they undoubtedly have an opinion. <laughs> um, that's what we do. Anyway, um, I'm worried that this is like Okay, I'm like really unburdening myself here. I'm worried that a lot of the healthy traditions that we have as a family, like we have always been super good about like 4th of July parties and, you know, Christmas and Easter and Mother's Day and Memorial Day and just like seeing each other consistently enough that like the family bond is not broken. The cousins know who each other are and their kids and what they're up to in life. And like, we have this like consistency and this love and like this network of family. It's not perfect, but it, it's, it was strong. And now with the most recent passing of my grandmother and with the changes of COVID, I'm just so afraid it'll just all disintegrate, you know, like we stayed away from each other in the name of health or something like that. Um, And then, like, a lot of these gatherings were around my grandmother. And they weren't to please her, but they were definitely, like, what was expected. And I just don't want to see that dissolve, you know? And then I think, well, I could have family reunions, right? And I start putting all this pressure on, like, what I should do. And it's a lot, you know? These are not the things that we go around, like, hey, how are you today? Oh, I'm really worried that, like, my family traditions are breaking down. No, but yet it is, like, pain that is inside of us that we are trying to not feel because we're trying to function. We're trying to go to work. We're trying to stop at the Wawa. We're trying to drive the kids to the next thing or you know, whatever, right? We're trying to live our lives and we, we actually, it wouldn't be safe or beneficial to be wearing these emotions on our sleeves all the time. However, if we just refuse to acknowledge them and we just shove them down and we just like drink and smoke and whatever else, eat, I don't know, whatever our thing is, so that we don't have to feel our feelings. Like, I don't know, maybe that I'd say that probably is beneficial sometimes, right? But ultimately, we got to face this shit and we got to just like at least look at it. You know, and emotions, they're like waves. Just because we face something doesn't mean we're going to feel that way forever. You know, our emotions and our feelings or even grief, it's like clouds in the sky. It's there. It passes by. We can look at it. We can acknowledge it. We can even label it or diagnose it. And then we can let it pass by. But I can tell you that I pumped out over 20 things on this list, and I have not (laughs) shared them all with you. Um, It's a lot. So Dr. Sarno says that we got to make this list, and we got to look at it. We got to look at it for 15 minutes a day. This is if you have a psychosomatic condition. You know, maybe you are perfect. And nothing's bothering you and you have no pain and you're perfectly healthy. And I really hope that that's true because that's legitimately what the Get Well podcast is about. It's about believing that it is possible. It's about believing that health is the default state. It's about believing that if we acknowledge the mind and body and spirit all together, that we can heal, that we can get better, that we can live our best life. And 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 to empower you with the tools, you know, um, something Dr. Dr. John Sarno says, he says that the unconscious mind, it needs to be something that we learn about in school. I mean, what if we actually had a user's manual for this incredible Ferrari that is sitting in between our ears? What if we actually knew what we were doing? <laughs> What if we actually knew how to work this technology that was within us? Right? That's what the Get Well With Me podcast is about. It's about learning more about that technology. Um, So I encourage you to jump into 
this work of Dr. John Sarno because he died at 95 just a few years ago in 2016, but he did leave a legacy that makes a difference. And I bet that, um, that that gave him a lot of peace at the end of his life. But I do know from listening to his interviews and his lectures, he did feel alone. He knew that his work was not going to get the respect and attention that it really needed just because of the system and the culture that we're within. But you are an individual and you can pursue any line of learning that you choose, even if it's not cool or mainstream. You have that ability. And you don't have to be frightened by words like degeneration or disintegration or herniation or your herniated disc or your bulging disc. I'm not saying it's not real. It's all real. You don't have to be afraid of it. You don't have to be afraid of it. And um, you can learn about how some of these structural abnormalities, they're just not even correlating with pain that we're experiencing, particularly sciatica and, you know, places that where pain shows up that there should be no connection. So I encourage you to learn more. I encourage you to make your list. I mean, it was truly therapeutic to just get out a pen and paper and write down the crap that, that was kind of like coming up for me. And it didn't stop there. When I put the pen down, when I put the pen down, um, I went and took a shower. And it's funny how in the shower, when your body's relaxed, your mind, it keeps working, but it just, I don't know, it works better or something. <laughs> so um, I was thinking about how on my list, most everything on my list is about things that are in the future. And I thought, well, that's interesting. How come, like, nothing from the past really came up, right? And Dr. John Sarno says that, look at me looking for my notes again. Here it is. Dr. John Sarno says that anger, hurt, emotional pain, sadness that's generated in childhood will stay with you all your life because there's no such thing as time. In the unconscious. Feelings experienced in the unconscious at any time in a person's life, including childhood, they're permanent. <laughs> so when I first heard him say this, excuse me, in one of his lectures, I was even more so convinced that I needed to read his books because I knew he was speaking in my language. There's no time in the unconscious mind. That's one of the key concepts of hypnosis. There's no time in the unconscious mind. You can go into a hypnotic trance and zone out for multiple minutes and it'll feel like seconds. You can do a hypnosis audio program, just like simply listening to some headphones for 20 minutes. You can close your eyes and when you open them again, it feels like two minutes went by. Or how about this? You go to sleep at night. You open your eyes in the morning. It doesn't really seem like you've been laying there for eight hours, does it? So that's the thing with the unconscious. There's no time there. <laughs> There's a mind-blowing thought that I can leave you with to close this episode. There's so much to learn about the unconscious mind, and that's just one of the things, that there's no time there. So we need to make space for our feelings, and um, I encourage you to make that list and look at it, and maybe keep it somewhere that you can keep looking at it. You don't have to be afraid of your body. You don't have to be afraid of the diagnosis of your doctor. You don't have to be afraid that your body's messing up. It's always on your side. It wants to keep you here. It's its only job. So really, our unconscious is doing an amazing job. Your body is doing an amazing job of healing you and keeping you alive. It doesn't mess up. 
If you're having symptoms, it's because it's trying to get your attention. So I have so much love in my heart for you today, and I am sending it out to you. You who's listening right now, you're my people. So until next time, much love. This episode was brought to you by Uncommon Knowledge Hypnosis Downloads. My closest friends know that I have a secret weapon for getting what I want, and it's hypnosis audio programs. When I discovered the power of hypnosis recordings more than 20 years ago, they were on cassette tape and I had to flip them over halfway through. (laughs) So thankfully in 2021, it's as simple as clicking play and closing my eyes. Ah, modern technology. Falling asleep at night to a hypnosis program playing in my ears has not only been the key to drifting off easily, but to waking up more rejuvenated. And no doubt, it's by far the fastest way to make any lasting changes in my life. In the past, I've used hypnosis downloads for anti-anxiety, healthy eating, workplace performance, to make me into a morning person, (laughs) to enjoy cleaning, increase my self-confidence, have the motivation to exercise, and even to make childbirth easier. Yes, hypnosis can do all that because it's actually you deciding to intentionally reprogram your mind that happens to run your life. (laughs) And most recently, I noticed that procrastination was causing me to waste precious, non-refundable time. So I went on a quest to find my answer. That's when I discovered the trustworthy and professional team of hypnotists at Uncommon Knowledge. They're based in the UK, and they put ethics first. They even have a 90-day money-back guarantee to prove it. The quality of their hypnosis recordings absolutely speaks for themselves. Thousands of people have experienced immediate and noticeable results from listening to hypnosis downloads, and I... And one of those people. So I was over the moon to find out that my podcast would be a perfect fit for a sponsor like Uncommon Knowledge. You might think it's priceless to program your mind for the body and life that you desire. And especially priceless to not even have to pick up the phone and make an appointment. To just simply put on some headphones while you're comfy and cozy in your own recliner at home. But... There is a price, and it's far less than you're thinking. (laughs) For about the same amount as you would spend on your lunch, you can have the tool that you need to free yourself from misery, move towards clarity, so that you can take action. Maybe you want to stop biting your nails or sleep better, or quit smoking, or stop procrastinating. (laughs) What's your thing? Could now be the time to get out of your own way and hold the door open for yourself? You can do that by checking out the incredible selection of hypnosis downloads. There's a link in the show notes, or you can find it at adriannehart.com. Until next time, much love.